I kind of designed this recipe to be a gourmet weeknight meal. I'm Matt and I'm a chef at Cooking Connection. You know, a lot of people when they get home from work, they don't want to have to go outside and fire up their grill. So instead, hey guys, let's just pan sear it and then pop it in the oven. This is a really delicious, quick and easy weeknight meal that tastes like you worked all day on it. I really love to serve it with Brussels sprouts. I, I hear it all the time. Oh my gosh, that's gross. I don't want to eat Brussels sprouts. I'm going to call the police if you try to feed me a Brussels sprout. But if you cook them right, they are absolutely fantastic. Hi guys, today we're making olive and lemon pork tenderloin. We're going to be using this wonderful Cook Well & Company olive and lemon vinaigrette. Now while this is a salad dressing, it also makes a fantastic marinade for pork. What we have here is a pork tenderloin that I've already trimmed the fat and silver skin off of it. So a little bit of salt goes just like so. And then a little bit of black pepper. There we are. And then of course, we wanna do all sides. Now we're gonna place it into a zip top bag to marinade with the olive and lemon vinaigrette. This stuff is a killer marinade for pork. Not just pork tenderloin like we're doing today, but also pork chops. Pour it right into the bag. Don't need to use too much. This stuff's strong enough that you don't have to completely drown the pork tenderloin in it. So just put it in and then rub it all over the pork and you'll be ready to go. So put this in your refrigerator for at least one hour, but no longer than six. Otherwise, the flavor of the vinaigrette is gonna be way overwhelming on the pork. So now what we've done is we have a pork tenderloin that I've already marinated and it's gonna go into our skillet. Medium heat, a little bit of grapeseed oil goes right into the pan, and we just wanna sear this for about two to three minutes aside. Now we are gonna roast this in the oven, but it's very important that we sear it first. It's gonna add some texture and a little bit of extra flavor to the pork. All right, so right into the pan we go. Just like that. And we're gonna brown it on all four sides. Just leave it alone for at least two minutes before you even bother to check the pork. Otherwise, you're never gonna get that nice and proper browning. Because not only does the browning make it look beautiful, it also adds some extra flavor and some great texture. So now that this has had a chance to sear for a few minutes, we're gonna go ahead and flip it over. And look at that. That is exactly what you wanna see on your pork. That nice color, that wonderful golden crust that I was talking about. And here's one that I went ahead and seared ahead of time. This guy is gonna go into the oven for about 10 to 15 minutes or until we hit an internal temperature of 155 degrees. I get questions all the time. Matt, your pork's so much better than mine. Why, what am I doing wrong? Well, matter of factly, you're overcooking it. And here we have one that we've already roasted. We're gonna take this out of the pan and place it on the cutting board and leave it alone for at least five minutes before you cut into it. Otherwise, it's going to dry out, so shh, the meat is resting. So while that's just hanging out, we're gonna go ahead and finish off these wonderful cheesy cracked pepper Brussels sprouts. Have my Brussels sprouts here. They're getting tossed with an extra little coating of this Cookwell & Company cracked pepper vinaigrette and a little bit of freshly grated Parmesan cheese. And then just mix them all up. Back to the pork tenderloin. Now that it's had a chance to rest, we're only gonna cut half of it. We're gonna save the other half until everybody wants some more so it doesn't just dry out. A little bit pink in the middle, that's exactly what you want. That doesn't mean it's rare, that means it's just a really, really nice medium. And that's what we're after. And there you have olive and lemon pork tenderloin with cheesy cracked pepper Brussels sprouts. You can find this recipe and more at heb.com slash cooking connection. Absolutely you can have that recipe. I have customers coming up, they're like, oh my gosh, this is the best thing I've ever had. Where are the Brussels sprouts? I need to get Brussels sprouts right now. They're that way? Okay. And then they sprint. Really good. I always really look forward going into work. What kind of pork should I get? Like, Just knowing that there's going to be like those extra customers that I really, really help and really make their lives easier and make their food taste better. Learn more at heb.com slash cooking connection.